This is part 4 of our railway dam explorations. In this part we discover more old ruins, gain access to an old pumping station, admire more paper spiders and food babies and inspect an old way bridge. Our first stop is to one of the pumping stations on the Mundaring to Kalgoorlie water pipeline. Sadly, this building is slowly but surely falling into decay caused by the wind and rain, rising damp and flooding and Australia's artistic scourge, the Vandal. Housing was provided for those working at the pumping station. At one time there were 10 homes and a school. These last three were built sometime in the 1950s. They are derelict now and highly vandalised. Let's hope the fools that smashed them up realise they are made from asbestos. The skinny one remains entirely impressed by this ancient mechanical way bridge, clearly designed for something much heavier than he. Holy pancake, it still works. The number six pumping station was constructed between 1901 and 1902. Architect George Temple Poole was engaged to consult on the pumping station designs and they reflect his very unique and distinctive style. Not going in there. <laughs> the large timbers of the coal store are a reminder of the day when old growth timber seemed to be a limitless supply. In later days, wood from the area became the fuel source due to the high cost of coal. We don't normally do this, but we wanted to see the inside before it was too late. I still made a good step. Rotten floors, be careful. Look at the size of these things. These steam pumps are truly impressive. I wonder if you could make them run. The old steam machinery certainly has a special sort of fascination. The basement is flooded, there. possibly from a leaking valve in the suction dam nearby. This is further adding to the damage of this beautiful old building. The white ceiling panels above are made from asbestos composite board. There's still a big crane in here. It is fascinating to see this massive furnace in 2023 and then to find this old photo from its construction in 1902 which clearly shows the furnace structure and the basement area in front that is now filled with water. Mm. As we walk through this old building, we can only wonder at what all the openings and hatches are used for. 
Yeah, oh yeah. While we examine the old furnaces, it is worth mentioning that this boiler equipment required constant maintenance. There were annual inspections and more major works every decade. Any items that could be reused were reinstalled, with unserviceable components being dumped across the road at a rubbish dump. The current chimney, for example, was replaced as early as 1913. That's the boiler. Yeah. And there's a handle for shoveling or moving the coal around. Yeah. Which one of these blokes do you reckon is the boss? Have a look at the shoes. This southern end of the passageway was once a small office space. Yeah, no, I saw that. And it's a few feet deep. Yeah. All the pipes and everything. You know what's up and what, wouldn't you? No. But this is the mechanism that moves backwards and forwards. I think the other one has got the parts still to it. Looks like it rotates. This one over here has still all the rods connecting it. Mostly anyway. See the big crane up on the roof? Oh yeah. I'm really glad we looked at this marvellous old building. Let's hope that it does not end up being demolished. And as we exit the ruins, we start towards the three remaining homes, but evidence is visible from the air of the other buildings that once stood in this area. Well-worn track in here. Well, considering the shit paper over there, I reckon it's probably a person track. We are continually surprised to see the damage vandals do. It is Why so needless and pointless, and it's the very reason we can't have nice things. Also, the toilet habits of some people really scare me. It's not worth fucking heritage. Someone has just had a great big shit. Mm -hmm. Right in the middle. What the fuck are people coming to? What a bunch of cockheads. Kitchen. Clock still ticking. You turn the light on the stream. Oh, there's another turd in here. Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding. There's a bit of a room without exit, isn't it? Hmm. Most bedrooms are like that. Oh, look at that big spider up there. Toilet there. 
Why don't I use a fucking toilet? It would have been better than this. Because there's probably turds in there. Might be a bit hairy going in. You know the floorboards are in really good condition. Every one of these buildings was badly damaged, but only rarely by the elements. Someone obviously needed the bath. The third house seemed a little larger, and the backyard showed that once someone with a very keen interest in gardening lived here. Pond. Bath has ripped out of this one as well. Okay. It might have been worth money. The roof is caved in. Mm. Look at the cupboards all stick built. Yep. That's how they used to do them. Mm. Something dripping on the floor here. Oh, through that vent. This is actually a bit bigger, this house, isn't it? No, this is the same as that other one. Is it? But this is different. This is a big room. These actually feel bigger than the other house. Mm, this one, this room does. See the way the heater was? Wood heater? Oh. It flew up the top. That's added in afterwards, but. Yeah. <coughs> Pretty sure that other house had a smaller kitchen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the whole house was smaller. See why O'Connor never oh, saw the Mundaring to Kalgoorlie pipeline in use. In March 1902, the Mundaring pump was started, and it was not until November that year that the number six pump was started. This pump station was eventually closed in 1969. Quite with his mm, looks like he's made these bricks on the ground as well. Because they've got leaches running over there. Yeah, okay. As we wander back to our cars to head further east, we have a few more stops planned. At one of them, we experience a little bit of terror after we disturb someone in the bush. <laughs> 